Meanwhile, let's talk about this. According to reports earlier this season, Dallas Mavericks and Mark Cuban made the decision to stop playing the national anthem before home games after consulting with the NBA commissioner, Adam Silver. The Mavericks did not announce that policy, but they just did it on their own. Well, obviously now uh, folks are being allowed into the arenas and by folks, I mean fans. So this is what the NBA has said. On Wednesday, the NBA made the statement regarding the anthem. With NBA teams now in the process of welcoming fans back into their arenas, all teams will play the national anthem in keeping with long-standing league policy. Well, Mark Cuban has said yes, they will play the anthem. They played it last night in their game, and he gave this statement, which essentially said, we respect and always have respected the passion people have for the anthem and our country. And I'll scroll down. He says, only then can we move forward and have courageous conversations that move this country forward and find what unites us. He wants us to have that same energy when we're having these uncomfortable conversations like we're going to have in this moment. Um, so we thought, why not? Why not throw this question out there? Should the national anthem be played at all sporting events? Is it mandatory? Now, before we have this conversation, I want to be very, very clear. Uh, the national anthem for all of us, and we've discussed this, uh, whether we want it played or not, does not mean we are disrespecting the military. We respect our veterans. Uh, we respect that they have fought for us and given us the right to choose this freedom mm -hmm. and this liberty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The national anthem for us is not about the military aspect of it, so please know that we want to respect our veterans. But mm -hmm. with that being said, talk to me about your thoughts on the anthem. Well, I think first, my father-in-law served in the military and has a Purple Heart for what he did. I have the most respect for him and him and all the military. I, I, think, I think this is an important conversation for us to have right now. Um, I think I have, okay, here's, so for me, I have stood for the national anthem thousands of times. Right, and I, I and when I watch the Olympics and I hear the national anthem, I always saw people having these like amazing moments, right? Just like tear and pride for their country, and I was always like, I want to have one of those moments. I, I've listened to the anthem, I've stood for it, and be, I honor it, and, and I do it proudly, and, and because because I love it, I've done it thousands of times, but I've never had that moment until the bubble, when I knelt with my teammates. I was emotional and I was honoring the flag. I was kneeling, but I was honoring the flag because I honored the ideals of our country are built on. I, they are beautiful ideals, but they don't necessarily reflect our history. They don't reflect our, our, our current circumstances. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we have to have these conversations because there's a whole lot of Americans who don't feel that way. And we can't tell them that their voice and their thoughts don't matter, mm -hmm. right? So. It's, it's, do we have answers right now? I don't know. I think we're trying to figure this out, but, but these are important conversations to be had. And, but I will say that when I was kneeling in the bubble, there was nothing, I was not being disrespectful by any means, but I felt like I was saying in that moment, I, I want these ideals. I want these men next to me to live in the same country and feel the same country and experience the same country that I do. Mm. And that brought me to tears. That was a powerful moment mm. for me. And if that's the anthem, like if we all feel the same way about that way, about that anthem, then the anthem is beautiful. Yeah. But if we're not all feeling the same way, then we got to have some conversations, right? Absolutely. And I think that's, that's, the, that's the key. I mean, to piggyback you, Kyle, that's the key is the fact that everyone doesn't feel that way. And obviously, like you said, you've heard the anthem a million times because you've played a million basketball games over your, your lifespan, right? So you've heard it a million times and you've just, I think because it's been cultured in us to hear that song, understand it, un hear the words of it, we memorize it solely because we've heard it a million times, but it doesn't reflect what's going on in today's society. It doesn't affect the history, like you said, and it doesn't affect what's going on right now in this very moment as well. So, like, do I care about the national anthem being played? No, I don't really care, you know what I mean? Does it affect me? Does it, is it gonna change the pace or the course of my day if I start the game hearing the national anthem or not? Probably not, but does it, does I, do I want it to embody the things that I wish this country stood for right now? Absolutely. Unfortunately, the things that are being said in that song aren't indicative of the world that we live in, and that's the disconnect. And also, another thing it feels like, if I was a player in the NBA, 
and you take away the national anthem and you don't want, you know, it feels like that was used as such a platform, right? You guys were kneeling during the night. It was used as a platform for players to, to put themselves on that map and say, here's what we're standing for. And it feels like when you take that away, you take away that platform for the players. And that's not necessarily how, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't feel right like that. You know what I mean? If I was a player, I would feel a little indifferent about it because I felt like that was a platform, whether people liked it or not, a platform that we would use to show what we stood for. Wait, say that again. What do you mean that it was a platform used for what specifically? Well, when they were kneeling, the national anthem was being played. When players are out there on the field and showing that they, you know, are against um, the way the country's being run at the moment, or police brutality, or you know, the way pe you know the way African Americans are being treated in this country, they would use it. They would use the national anthem to kneel or to put a fist in the air or to have that moment to represent and pick a side on who they're choosing and what they believe in. Mm -hmm. and, if, and, and part of it, taking taking that away from the players, it feels like you're taking a small platform, a, you know, a platform on the, it's not the entire game, but you're taking something away. At least that's it, how I feel. It's a big question. Mm -hmm. and, and, and saying, should the anthem be played at sporting events isn't yes or no. And Kyle, I'll leave you with the last word before we close. Is there an alternative? Well, there could be. This is, this is why we're having these, these, these conversations. I, I, think, I think that it is important that we do not see America as a finished product. Right? This country can be better. This country can represent everyone better. And that's the goal. And we, if we, like, we, we, we put so much pressure on this song right now. Mm. Like, this, does, this mm -hmm. song, like, does this song really represent us like that? For some people it does, and we need mm -hmm. to honor that as well. Mm -hmm. Right? But I, I, I just think our country is not a finished product. We can keep getting better. We can keep on growing. Yes. We can keep on including everyone in the conversation. And that's... That's the ideals of our country. In short, tradition can be modified. History can be changed. And now's it the perfect to, time. Yeah. Now's the right. perfect time to rebuild. Look time. where we are. Now we yeah. have the, the ability to set the right foundation for our country moving forward. All right. We're in the perfect position.